guys, back again with Because of the Rabbit. Let's uh, jump right into it. We are on chapter nine. When a rabbit stretches towards you with its ears tipped forward, it's curious and wants to share what you're doing. I love those rabbit facts. I learned so much about rabbits. <clears throat> okay. I was determined to make the second day of school better than the first. To keep me, to help me keep going, I made a list of my assignment. I made a list in my assignment notebook of all the things that would be easier on the second day. By the time I got off the bus, I already had four things written down. It's a great idea. And here's her list. Easier the second day. One, I know where my room and desk are. Two, I know some of the kids' names. Three, I brought a bag lunch. Four, I have, to, I have a plan to invite my group to my house. I was so excited about the last one that I didn't even wait until Leah, Iris, and Jack had unpacked their backpacks. So I was thinking about our project. Two truths then a lie, Jack said. School hasn't started yet, Iris said. Leah nodded. I'm not even awake. I stayed up too late watching baby goat videos. My sister showed me one, and then we just kept clicking on more. That sounds cute, I said, but inside I felt deflated, like, I was, like I'm excited to go on a hike and wake up and find it pouring rain outside. Don't worry, I told myself. There will be a right time to talk about the project. To help me learn kids' names, I kept a list in the back of my assignment notebook and put a star next to my potential best friends. I loaned a pencil to a boy named Matt and sat next to Sarah on the rug for morning meeting. Brandon liked to talk in class, which meant Miss Hutton said his name a lot. So I knew six names out of the 22 kids in my class. Leah, Iris, Jack, Matt, Sarah, and Brandon. And she starred Leah, Iris, and Sarah as potential best friends. I didn't want to have extra homework when my group came over. So as the morning went on, I tried to finish everything. Whenever Miss Martell wanted Jack to move on to the next thing, she made a little circle spinning motion in the air with her index finger. If I caught my mind wandering, I'd secretly do that motion under my desk with my finger. Move on, keep going. When lunch came, I still hadn't had the chance to ask Iris, Leah, and Jack over, but at least I had a plan for the cafeteria. I hoped the bag lunch would help me find a seat faster. The chairs were already filling up when I walked into the cafeteria. I saw Iris and Leah's group had no extra seat for me. Sarah wasn't at the table yet. Matt had one seat open at his table, and even though the table was mostly boys, I figured he owed me for loaning the, him the pencil. Hi, I said, putting my bag lunch down at the seat next to him. I held my breath in case he told me it was taken. Hey, he replied, thanks for the pencil. I smiled, no problem. Time for lunch, I heard behind me. I turned around, oh, Hey Jack, today I'm sitting here, okay? Yes. He didn't seem upset, but as he walked away, I felt bad. Jack had been nice to sit with me yesterday. If you had to choose one, would you rather never take a shower again or never brush your teeth? A boy across the table asked Matt. I could just go swimming instead of taking a shower, Matt replied. So I'd keep my toothbrush. Would you rather have smelly feet or smelly breath? Smelly feet, the boy said. It wasn't much of a conversation, but it was one. I was trying to decide what I'd pick when the, when the first boy said, hey, did you have time to watch that video I sent you about the bugs that live in your pillow? <laughs> yes, Matt said, it was disgusting. It reminded me of last year. Remember when Mr. Pat when Mr. Patton, the other boy laughed and slapped the table. I know exactly what you're going to say. Around me, kids were talking and laughing. I never knew you could be surrounded by so many kids and still feel alone. I tried to stay focused on the boys at my table, but out of the corner of my eye, I could see Leah and Iris were making funny faces at each other and laughing. Sarah was sharing her french fries at, with another girl. Jack was talking to Dustin and another boy at the back table. When I got back to the classroom, I crossed out, I brought a bag lunch on my easier on the second day list. Today's lunch was just a different kind of hard. In the afternoon, Miss Hutton took us out to the school took us to the school library and told us we were allowed to choose any two books to take home. Going to the library was always one of my favorite things to do, and this library was so bright and beautiful. I couldn't believe it was all for the kids. Tissue paper tropical fish hung from the skylights, and there was a big terrarium with a real live lizard in it. Cool. There were tables with chairs and bean bags, and even some big balls to sit on at the banks of the computers and so many rows of bookshelves. I took a deep breath of that wonderful book smell, trying to hold in my excitement. After you choose your books, Miss Hutton said, you can spend the rest of the period reading or working on your two truths and a lie presentation. Finally, 
Now it would be the now would it would be the right time to invite the other kids over to my house. I'll save us some seats, I said to Leah, Iris, and Jack. I figured I'd be done choosing books first because I knew what kinds of books I wanted and where to find them. I spent a lot of time at our small public library and recognized the Dewey Decimal numbers on the no nonfiction shelves. I headed for the 630s. This time I wasn't learning about pet rabbits for a homeschool report though. Loppy was depending on me and I wanted to do everything right so Loppy would always love me best. Not like Maggie and Molly who liked me fine until they had a choice. Then they always picked mom. I found two good books on rabbit care and took them to the desk to sign them out. On my way, I passed Jack. Hey, after you get your books, meet me at one of the tables by the window, I said. I have a plan. He pulled out the encyclopedia of animals from the stacks without even looking at me. Yes. I picked a table with four seats and put extra books on the empty chairs to save them for Jack, Iris, and Leah. It felt nice to be the person saving seats for a change. I opened the first rabbit book and began reading the chapter, Understanding Your Rabbit. I had read and taken notes on the whole section before Jack sat next to me. At another table, I could hear Brandon talking in a fake British, British accent. Matt and another kid were smiling and laughing at him. Jack opened the Encyclopedia of Animals and showed me the table of contents. Chapter, chapter 12 is Lagomorpha, Rabbits, Hares, and Pikas. I never heard of a pika, I said. I'll have to look that up. Maybe it's pika. I don't know anything about animals. <laughs> Jack flipped the pages. I hadn't meant now, but when he swung the book around to show me, the animal was adorable, like a guinea pig with mouse ears. Wow, I said, that's so cute. A pika barks when it's scared, Jack said. Its nickname is Rock Rabbit. It doesn't really look like a rabbit, I said. More like a... You waskily walk rabbit, Jack said in Elmer Fudd voice. The other kids stopped, stopped talking. They glanced sideways, frowning. How come they were talking different? When they were talking differently, it was funny. But when Jack did, it wasn't. I guess when you already belong, it's easier to be different. That's funny, I said loudly, like loudly, like we were joking, and the other kids were wrong if they didn't think so. Pikas collect vegetarian vegetation to store underground for the winter, Jack said. They don't hibernate. The other kids were definitely paying attention to us now. I could feel my face getting red, but talking to Jack was like sledding down a steep hill. Once the momentum kicked in, I'd be lucky if I could steer. They live in the mountains and need cool temperatures. As temperatures rise, they have to climb higher. With climate change, hi, I saved you a seat. I waved to Iris and Leah. I knew it was rude to interrupt Jack, but he wasn't stopping on his own, and that was rude too. Maybe Owen's advice to be yourself was really too simple. Maybe there were there was a point where being completely yourself stopped being a good thing and just became a lonely thing. I moved the extra books off the chairs and waited impatiently while Iris and Leah sat down. So I had a great idea about our project. I said, we can meet at my house this afternoon after school and do the video. We wouldn't be rushed in case we need to do a few takes. Leah gave me an apologetic smile. I'm not sure I can get a ride. My mom and dad are at work. You can take the bus with me, I said. It stops right at the end of our driveway. I'm sure my mom could bring you home after. You can't just take someone else's bus, Iris said. Leah nodded. You have to bring a permission slip from home and give it to the bus give it to the bus office first thing in the morning. Oh, the smile slid off my face. I didn't know that. My mom could probably pick you up and bring you home, I offered. It's too complicated. Let's just work in twos, Iris said. Me and Leah, you and Jack. But it'll, look, but it'll look like two things instead of a group project, I said. Don't worry, Emma, Leah said. This is just a little project, not a big deal. It won't even count much towards our grade. Not a big deal? But I wanted them to come to my house. I wanted them to get to know me at home, where it'd be easier to become friends. I wanted to do a good job on the project. I wanted a few things to go my way instead of challenge, instead of changing all my ideas and saying, I want you to meet my pet rabbit would just sound pathetic. I could tell that Leah and Iris were getting frustrated with me though. Okay, I said quietly. Miss Hutton clapped her hands to get our attention. We have about five minutes before we need to go back to the classroom. So come sign out your books if you haven't done so already. Can I come? I asked Jack quietly. Or I'm sorry, can you come? I asked Jack quietly. He took out his phone. It's, for emer it's just for emergencies. I didn't know if the person he was texting would consider this an actual emergency, but within minutes we had a plan. Jack's mom would bring him to my house today after school. Uh, this is her easier the second day list. 
uh, one, I know where my room and desk are. Two, I know more of the kids' names. She crossed out some and wrote more. Three, I brought a school uh, I brought a bag lunch. She crossed that out and instead wrote, not actually easier, though I did use the right trash cans. That's good. And four, she had written, I have a plan to invite my group to my house. And she crossed that out and wrote, only Jack is coming. That is the end of chapter nine. So thanks for joining us again. Um, Emma's just having a rough time. Poor, poor girl. Um, but anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>